Hey everyone, welcome to the video. This one we're going over some of my favorite plays for the seven game NBA slate for tonight on DraftKings. Anyway, before we continue, if you could leave a like and if you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out and I really appreciate it. You can also follow me on Twitter at crispino 16 I'm almost at 400 followers on there. It's not a lot, but maybe we can get over that today. That'd be pretty cool. And if you're interested in the spreadsheets, I build every single night for the NBA season in my Slack chat, my cheat sheet, and my projections, and all that good stuff. Links in the description below for my Patreon. It's the beginning of the month, so if you want to sign up, it's the best time to do so. And I think that's about it, so let's get right into the video. So I got two guys I want to spend up for tonight. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to fit in both, but I think it would be nice to fit in both. But the first guy I am trying, I'm going to, not trying, I'm going to get in my lineup tonight is Andre Drummond at 10,100. And uh, we've loved playing Dr Drummond so far this year with Blake Griffin being out as his usage rate in points per minute has always gotten a nice boost when that's the case, and that's also the case tonight. He's also coming off a monster outing versus Chicago where he had put up where he put up 67 DraftKings points on 25 points and 24 rebounds. And that's now his third game of at least 20 points and 20 rebounds. So it's his third 20-20 game of the season, and we've only had, what, five games here? So that's pretty incredible. On the year, he's averaging 35 minutes per game, and he's sitting around 1.4 uh, fantasy points per minute, which is also very, very good. He also owns a 25.6% usage rate. So, you know, he's getting the majority of the ball here. He's been dominating. So obviously got to like uh, Andre Drummond here, and he also gets a great matchup versus Brooklyn, who we love targeting centers against. And they've given up the second most points to opposing big men this season, and they were awful last year. So the stars are all aligning here for another big Andre Drummond game, and I wouldn't be surprised if we see another 20-20 game and maybe even push for a 30-20 game as well. Maybe 30-30, that's pushing it, but there's potential here for this in this matchup. And also one more thing, Detroit typically plays pretty slow, but this will be a pace-up spot versus Brooklyn, who is one of the faster pace pace of plays teams in the league actually the second fastest so there's plenty of upside here for drummond even though he's priced near a ceiling but given the options available to us on the slate drummond is looking like a priority priority for me you know the fast paced nature of the nets they're gonna be you know throwing up shots and if they're missing drummond's gonna eat up all these rebounds so this is a great spot for andre drummond and he's the first guy i'm looking to fit in my lineups then the next guy if you can fit both great but if you can fit, if you only fit one, I would go Drummond. But I think uh, Giannis is also an interesting option at 10,700. He is more expensive, which is a downside. But the guy is a points per minute monster, and he's proving it yet again this season. He's got a rate of 1.77 points per minute, which is one of the highest in the league so far of people that have played more than you know just a handful of minutes. He also has a very nice 32% usage rate. Even when he doesn't get a full complement of minutes either, we've seen huge fantasy days like uh, out of him, like in their first game versus Houston, where only logged 28 minutes, and he still put up. Over 70 fantasy points, which was what on the 24th, yeah, 28 minutes, and still had 70 fantasy points. That's insane. And really, the guy does it all. He uh, and he's always a uh, threat for a triple double on the year. He's averaging 23 points, eight assists, and 13 rebounds. So he's already averaging a double double, and he's really close to a triple double at this moment. And he's also going to rack up steals and blocks. We know how good he is on defense, and all that gives us just shy of 60 fantasy points per game in the year already. And now I worry about him playing uh, his playing time occasionally in big spreads, but they're only five point favorites here versus a solid Raptors squad, so this should be a pretty back and forth, you know, in competitive game. And the one thing I always like from my guys is when their team plays at a fast pace, and Giannis would qualify for that. The Bucks are playing at the third fastest pace. Uh, team in this uh, in the league this year already uh, so far and also on the other side the Raptors are the 11th fastest team so far so there's a lot to like here and it's a decently high Vegas level of 225 should be a pretty competitive game I think Giannis probably logs around 35 minutes maybe more in this outing so and with this 1.77 points per minute on the season I think it'd be a good idea to probably try to get Giannis in I don't know if you're gonna be able to afford Drummond or and Angie and Angie Giannis together but there's plenty of value on the slate, so I do think it's doable. So if you can, I would love that. But Drummond's my number one, then Giannis is my number two. And then if we go down a little bit, we got D'Angelo Russell at 8,900. <clears throat> so the Warriors lineup, it's completely pretty much destroyed at this point. Steph Curry's out. Uh, they lost Durant. There's no Clay Thompson. It looks like Draymond Green's not going to play. So that really only leaves us d low to create offense on this squad. He had a massive 39% usage rate last night and shot the ball 24 times in 33 minutes, including 11 three-pointers. Now he only hit, what, three of those, but still. I like the shots that he's putting up. And the offense is going to completely run through him, and he should flirt with 50 fantasy points on a nightly basis, especially if Draymond Green is out, which a lot of news is suggesting he will be. He was already banged up, and then he got uh, injured last night, and they said they're going to you know, monitor his minutes throughout the season. So it looks like the Warriors are going to be trying to tank here. So D'Angelo Russell is the only player left, honestly, that's got talent. I know it's, I'm not, not the only guy that's got talent, but you know what I mean, like top-tier talent. 
I know his price is getting up there. It's priced near a ceiling, though, but I like the volume and talent we are getting here. So D'Angelo Russell should have a pretty big outing here at 40, 48 fantasy points last night. Shot the ball a lot. Offense is going to run through him. He makes sense. We've seen his upside in Brooklyn, so now he's the only guy. I think D'Angelo Russell makes sense tonight. Should be pretty popular. He's been popular with Steph Curry, so I wouldn't imagine why he wouldn't be popular tonight, especially without Draymond Green or Steph Curry. And so now we're going to look at some value plays. So there's not a lot I like in the mid-range. Maybe some things will open up throughout the day. But as of right now, there's nothing that absolutely pops out to me. Tobias Harris without Joe LMB, but it's not the best matchup versus Portland. Uh, Jel- uh, not Jelonis, Jonas Valunci Unis, he's somewhat interesting in a grid matchup versus P- uh, Phoenix, who struggles versus big men. But we don't know how many minutes he's going to get. I think I got him for like 25 right now. But he's been pretty good this season on a points-per-minute basis if you look at his numbers. I mean, 31 points in 23 minutes, that game is a blowout. 44 points in 20 minutes versus Brooklyn, everyone needs versus Brooklyn. 26 points in 18 minutes versus Chicago, another good matchup. Then versus Miami, he had 12 points in 16 minutes, which that's a tougher matchup. But still, he's been pretty good on a points-per-minute basis so far. And good matchup versus Phoenix at the pace-up spot right there, so I wouldn't hate him. But again, not like a core play for enemy uh, for for me at the moment. But let's look at some value options because there is a ton of value on this. And someone that really stands out to me right now is Eric Pascal at 4,600. So we're going to talk about a lot of Warriors in this video, but there's just a lot of minutes that opened up. So like I said, uh, we're assuming Draymond Green does sit for this game, which I think he will, and that will open up some extra minutes for the big men on this team. And just in general, not just the big men, but just minutes all around for other guys. Pascal is already averaging 26 minutes a game and about 0.7 points per minute, which you'd expect both to come up with Draymond Green being out. At the moment, I have him for about 30 minutes in this game, 30-31, and let's give him a fair 0.8 points per minute, and that's not half bad, especially once you look at the matchup versus Charlotte, who's getting abused by big men right now, giving up the most points in the league versus them this season. Just every single night, they get killed by big men. I mean, we've seen monster games from Anthony Davis, Carl Anthony Towns, Rashawn Holmes, and some other guys. I'm not saying he's going to put up numbers like those guys, but they've been getting killed down low so far this season and really in all aspects. So Eric Paschal at 4,600, I will take that. And he did have a really nice game versus Phoenix where he showed his upside. He had 38 minutes and got 20 real-life points, three rebounds, two blocks, 29 fantasy points. I will take that at 4,600. So he's on a short list for me for value. Another guy would be Jordan Poole at 3,800. His price came up from last night where he was 3,200, but you know, deservedly so. It should come up. It, I mean, that's just a little bit too cheap. But 3,800, I do like Jordan Poole. Here's another guy benefiting from someone being out. Poole got the start last night for Steph Curry and logged a pretty nice 29 minutes. He shot 4 for 7 from deep and scored 20 real-life points, which was good for 23 fantasy points. So he really didn't do anything else besides, uh, besides scoring points where he had just, what, one assist? I think, yeah, one assist and three fouls, one turnover. So... Just pretty much scoring, but and so I guess that makes him a little bit riskier because he doesn't really have peripheral stats. But and if he's cold, it might be a really bad outing. But he should be able to put up some points here versus Charlotte. You know, Warriors are short-handed, so they're getting the guys to score. And I think Jordan Poole is capable of that. And he's still cheap enough where I'll have interest with his 27 to 30 minutes that he's projected. So Jordan Poole, I don't mind him either. And then uh, one more Warrior here. We got Damian Lee at what is he? 3,500. He's actually grading out as my number one value play as of the moment. And when he's seen 20 plus minutes this season in a game, he's had some pretty strong fantasy performances, especially for this price. Versus New Orleans, he had 42 fantasy points and then 26 uh, points last night versus the Spurs. As of right now, I got him for around 25 minutes. And on the season, he's been at 1.07 points per minute. And the matchup versus Charlotte is a good one. So he would make some sense as well. I think he can get 30 fantasy points in this outing, especially with everyone being out. I think as of right now, I got him for like 27 fantasy points. So, you know, 30 point up, uh, he's got 30 point upside in this matchup. So Damian Lee, I like him as well. And also, I'm talking about a whole bunch of Warriors here, but Marquise Chris would make some sense too. I think I got him for around 19 minutes so uh, t- tonight, and he's a pretty much a point-for-minute guy. Only problem is the guy loves fouling, so whenever I play him, the guy fouls really quick and barely plays, so just know that. I'm pretty sure I played him versus New Orleans, and he got nine minutes. I think that's when I played him. I can't remember exactly, but yeah, Marquise Chris. I mean, you get what you pay for with this guy, but he's 3,100. Should see some extra minutes with Draymond Green being out. Say he gets 18 to 20 minutes. Point from a guy, 20 points at 3,100. Yeah, I will take that. Just know there's risk with him fouling all the time, which always sucks with him. Then you get a former, another former warrior, not another former warrior, but just another warrior, a connection to the Warriors here. Uh, Carl Anthony Towns is out. I mean, they're going to be doing a rotation committee, probably with the center position here, but Jordan Bell should see 
anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes, and the guy's probably, he's a little bit less than a fantasy point per minute kind of guy, but I think he can get you about 18 to 20 fantasy points here at 3,600, so I wouldn't hate him either. And then that's pretty much it. Am I forgetting it? Anthony Tolliver? Yeah, I should probably talk about Anthony Tolliver. He is, what, 3,300? So I don't mind him. It's not a great matchup or anything. It's never fun to play the guy, but with Collins out, his minutes have been really nice the past two games in the mid to upper 20s. He's had 20 plus fantasy points two games in a row. So at this price tag, I will take it. He doesn't need to do much at all, and I think he can pay off salary at 3,300. So we have a ton of value options on the slate. There's a lot of guys in the 3K range and then the low 4K range that we can plug in. So actually, I think it's kind of probably going to be pretty easy tonight to be able to fit in someone like uh, fitting not someone uh, multiple guys like Giannis, Andre Drummond, and uh, D'Angelo Russell. So I wouldn't hate the idea of spending up for all three of those guys. And as for a tournament option, I think Devin Booker might go a little bit overlooked tonight because everyone's going to spend up for Drummond, Giannis, D'Angelo Russell. And at 8,300, that range might get a little bit overlooked. And we got some good players around here. And I think Devin Booker, 8,300, pretty nice play. He's writing out as one of the better values on my slate, just given his price and upside. And, you know, it's a great matchup versus Memphis. They're, get, they're playing at a very fast pace this season. Actually, the fastest team in the entire league at the moment. And Phoenix is playing at the ninth fastest. So I always love Booker in pace-up games as he should be chucking shots at will. And this sets up pretty well for him. On the year, he's got a 28% usage rate. And he's been getting roughly 35 minutes per game. And he's been at 1.13 points per minute so far this season, which I'd expect that to come up maybe a little bit. Last year, it was at about 1.2. So there's room for improvement there. And if you just make him a baseline projection based off of his numbers so far so far this season, that puts him at about 40 fantasy points. But I like to give him a little bit of a boost here in this matchup in a pace-up situation. So I think we could get a 50-point upside game out of him as long as he's hitting his shots. And if he's hitting his shots, we've seen huge, huge games from Devin Booker. I remember one time a couple years ago, he had like 90 fantasy points where he went absolutely nuts. I'm not saying I'm expecting that, but you know this, this game matches up pretty well for Devin Booker. So I think he makes some sense as an interesting uh, tournament option. And 8,300 is actually pretty affordable. And we've seen him have pretty good games so far this season, 47, 49, 42. Worst game was against Utah, which, you know, Utah is one of the tougher matches in the league. Only logged 29 minutes, 27 fantasy points. But other than that, I think we're going to get over 40 uh, fantasy points here with upside of around 50. So Devin Booker, I think he makes some sense as a nice tournament option. I think that's going to be it for this video, guys. Remember, things can change throughout the day. A lot of the times, there's news that comes out, as, comes out around 6. Completely just changes my approach to the slate. You know, like when Miami, Josh Richardson was rolled out, um... It just opened up all the value for all the other Miami guys. So the slate can change in a matter of minutes. So this is just my initial thoughts on that really early in the day. So if you want all my updates, links to the description below for my spreadsheet I build. I update it throughout the day, update my cheat sheet, all that good stuff. I'll drop news in the Slack chat, all that good stuff. So I'm going to leave you guys with that. I wish you guys the best of luck. Remember to leave a like. And if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out. Hopefully we can get to 3,000 subscribers soon. Follow me on Twitter, and I'll see you guys in the next video. And check out my NFL videos if you haven't already. All my content for the NFL season is up for week nine. So check it out if you haven't, and I'll see you guys, and I wish you guys the best.